Press is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All righty. How are you doing with your book? Do you have everything you need? Do you have an ebook? Do you have an audio book? Do you have a print book? Have you thought about repurposing your book? There's lots of things that you can do with your book, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on your ebook. And maybe that's one of the things you need to repurpose. Maybe it's not all together. Maybe it's uh, you jumped the gun and maybe you republished it uh, and put it out before you really had a chance to come back and relook at it. Maybe it's time to maybe, as we said, repurpose and that you do a division and maybe you have a couple of books. So there's a lot of maybes here. And with us is we have an expert who is going to put it together and get us into what's what with the books, what's the pricing with the books, what kind of formatting we need with the book, how do we handle all the gizmos and gadgets that sometimes go into books, should we use illustrations, what about pictures, what, what, what. So with us is Nick Taylor. He's been working with ebooks for a long, long time. He is the founding principal of lightandsoundgraphics.com based out of Colorado and he's going to start answering a lot of questions for us. So hi Nick, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So what is the latest, we might as well just jump into this, what is the latest in ebook land and uh, what changes are going on in that area? Um, well, it's actually pretty well timed that we're doing this. Um, one of the things that was leaked, um, I believe, is this week or the end of last week, was Kindle is looking at um, who is owned by Amazon. Um, Amazon is looking at doing something called Kindle Unlimited, which would be a subscription-based ebook service um, similar to uh, Scribe and I want to say the other country company's name is Oyster, where it's kind of like Netflix but for books. Um, so that's been leaked out where it'd be ten dollars a month and you can download out of their catalog of over 600,000 books that they right now have in this program, that you could download those. So that's causing quite a buzz um, inside the you know the reader community and then most definitely inside of the publishing community because we don't know much about it and uh, we don't know all the terms, we don't know all that kind of stuff. So authors are, I would say, optimistically skeptical. If that's oh, a good that- oxymoron for it. Well, that's always good to use with Amazon a little bit, but um, you know, yeah. obviously they've had a lot of thought, whatever it is. So it's it's a definite they're going to roll out Kindle Unlimited. Is that correct? That's what it's looking like. Um, everything that I've been able to find on it shows that there is a pilot out there. Um, they had posted some stuff and pulled it down, but you know, some of the other kind of tech stuff behind it. Um, it's not surprising that we're seeing this happening. Everything has been running uh, cloud-based, streaming-based with a lot of different things. I mean, even software now are on monthly memberships. Um, so it's not surprising to see that's happening, especially with some of those um, subscriber-based um, accounts starting to pick up some customers because for a voracious reader, which is who we're all marketing to, it makes a whole lot of financial sense. So this will be, and, and where did you hear the $10 price tag from? Um, I've read several articles um, from, I believe there was a, uh, I'm trying to remember which which companies I read uh, some of these from, um, quite a few different ones that are out there if you if you look for it, some screenshots from it. Um, like I said, it's not officially announced yet from my understanding. It's kind of been something that's just come about pretty recently. I know I was looking through some of my news feeds the other day and was like, what, what, what is this? So it's something that's relatively new coming from the Kindle front. All right. So hot news there, then Amazon is going to jump into a monthly fee. So what we don't know what the rules is, 
how many is it is it truly unlimited or is it one book at a time and you turn it back we don't know anything but just somehow something's rolling out it's in beta testing is that it right yeah okay. and we don't know what kind of market penetration it's going to get either it may not have much or it may change the industry we really just don't know yet well i suspect there will be number one a change in the industry <laughs> I, I think yeah. that's going to yeah, and, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, fair enough, yeah. Yeah, you know, where, whether it's, uh, if, I mean, we all know also that e-books, um, the sales of e-books have flattened, so this may be a way to right. boost up Amazon's bottom line, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, you know, maybe we need to touch on that, because a lot of people um, don't realize that e-books, it was projected a couple of years ago that they would flatten in this year 2014, and by God, that's what hap that's what's happened. Um, uh -huh. We've seen... Yeah, we've seen tablet sales certainly increase, and uh, those um, doomsdayers out there who thought that and, and were projecting the 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 total disappearance of print books are eating their words because print books, even though their sales gross sales are down, they're still the dominant source out there. Well, and so, the doomsdayer is, is funny. They're still out there, and they're still beating the drum just as just as hard as they were before. But yeah, no, it it seemed to have flattened out quite a bit. Yeah. So there we are. All right. So let's just jump in. All right. I guess I should also say, any other buzz out there besides Kindle's Unlimited? <laughs> I not you know not that I can think of. At least nothing that's that's coming in comparison to um, to something like that. Everything else kind of got dwarfed that might have been out there. All right, so it's it's been dwarfed. Well, Nick, one of uh -huh. the things you you and I have talked about, um, and I know that I love to refer people to you. You're working on several of our books right now. Um, that mm -hmm. this whole thing about formatting, which which format do you format in, and what are some of the words of wisdom that you can give to our listeners on author you your guide to book publishing? Um, I would say when it comes to ebook formatting, um, keep it simple. The biggest things to remember, and this is hard for a lot of authors when they're first coming into the space, because like we've said, so many people are still buying print, that there's a lot of authors who really don't know how the ebook space works. And a lot of authors really get thrown for a loop when they find out that readers can basically change whatever they want about how their book looks. So keep it simple. Keep the formatting clean, because you also don't want to jar readers out of your book because of sloppy formatting. So keep it very clean, keep it very simple. Um, if you can, you know, keep it nice and smooth. So keeping it simple, and, and you know that um, you're, you're right on the dime. I have had interesting conversations with uh, authors as recently as yesterday that we, I went through the whole deal saying that if it is a, a flow format on your ebook, your, you, they can make just one word a page if they want to. They can get those words so mm -hmm. big and that if you mm -hmm. think that you're going to present it just like it, it is, you are in for a rude awakening. Oh, uh, it's, it's, it. it's funny watching the looks on people's faces when they have that realization. Yeah, and, and the thing is that in the e-format, a lot of books can lose what I would call their prettiness. Um, mm -hmm. That you know, you've spent all this time to design and your openings, and you might have these lovely callouts. Well, guess what? <laughs> they may be gone. Gone. <laughs> gone. Oh, gone. And gone. the font that just looks perfect with everything. And there's that person that's like, I only read in Courier, and I want it to be 80 point, 80 point font. Yeah, no, and it's at the window. Yes. Well, and let's unless they select Courier. And you know that's a choice, but right? if, if if you yeah. as the author want your readers to read in Courier, um, it's not going to happen. So, no. with with, no. with that said, okay. So, rule number one: keep your ebook simple when it comes to formatting. What's our rule number two? Mm -hmm. um, rule number two that I would say is. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you're, and it's a little bit along the simplistic lines, you want to make sure it's consumable. Um, so if you have things like charts and forms and things that people are going to be filling out, you have to remember that readers are not going to be able to do that on their e-reader. They might be able to put in a note, but it's not really, there's no one sitting out there, hopefully, with a magic marker writing on the screen of their Kindle or their Nook. So if you have those type of interactive elements, you need to make sure that readers can easily get to them. 
Um, so, so reader accessibility, it's got to be easy for them. Okay, so Nick, let me talk about that a little bit. So it, a lot of people think that they can easily make notes and do all kinds of goodies on their Kindle. So you're telling me you can't make notes. You can. You can make the notes. Um, you can highlight text and you can put a note in that. But what I found, especially when it comes to books that have um, like a take action section where you would write down something, this is very prevalent in like self-help and financial books. Um, when you see those sections, someone's putting in a note, but it's not putting that note across their e-reader. They have to highlight back over that note section or look inside their Kindle's note area and go through and read those. And some readers that could be okay for, for but for a lot of readers, they're probably going to either want to write it on a piece of paper or go to your website and download something. So it's one of those things to kind of keep in mind that somebody who might put a note in there, but chances are they're not going to. And if they do, they're, they may not even know how to go back and find it. So maybe, yeah, well, that's, that's a question. I have, I have two questions actually here. So let's say I'm going through my handy dandy XYZ book and mm -hmm. that um, I'm making these copious highlights because I, oh my, these words are stellar. There's no way I want to forget them with this key phrase. How do I go back and find what I've highlighted? Um, generally speaking, like, for example, if you're on the home page of your Kindle, um, if you have that book highlighted, you can go in and you can, where you add it, would add, be able to add it inside a collection or something of that nature. You'll also see a notes section, and that'll bring up, if you click on that, all of the notes that you have for the books, so all the highlights, all the notes that you've written, all of that's in there. Um, Kindle also has on some of their stuff where you can bring some of that out, export it out. So generally speaking, you can go in and find it. And I find myself where if I do take notes, I will do that, where I'll go into that notes section and it's like, what, was, what did I mean to? And I'll look. But it's not an overly easy section to, for example, if you were doing it, filling out a form, going into that all of a sudden you just have a list of information that's sitting in there and it may be a little bit difficult to do, but okay. you can write notes, you can highlight, and you can find it pretty easy. All right, so with that, we're going to be right back. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to find out more ideas. I have actually an idea, if you do have an action thing, what you should do off of your website. This is Judith Browse. My guest is Nick Taylor of Light and Sound Graphics. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with it? If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed Jazz, punch, and panache. Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. picture tells a story, and it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for 
excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. We're talking ebooks today, formatting and some of Nick Taylor's, who is the principal of lightandsoundgraphics.com, of what you can do to make your ebook rock and roll and certainly be reader friendly. And Nick had just talked about. Um, if your if your book has like an action section, a take action sentence, or you want them to do stuff, uh, my thought as he was saying that is this is the way for you whether you want to monetize it and create an accompanying type of little workbook that they could go or get a freebie and attract them. So what you would say to get my free uh, workbook to go with my ebook that you've just bought. They have to sign up and give them your email name, which is always a good idea. Um, and you can create that so then they have something to download, um, print out, and fill in the blank as they go through the ebook. What do you think about that, Nick? I think it's a really good idea for those type of books that have any of those type of sections. Um, it's just one more way to get in front of people, and it's making sure that people are getting. If you put a workbook inside your print book, you probably wanted them to fill it out. So. It gives you another avenue to make sure those people do what the purpose of the book was. Yeah, because one of the problems is with these take action books, and certainly my book, Author You, uh, Creating and Building Your Author and Book Platforms, has got 22 activities. I mean, I'm kind of working their butt off mm -hmm. as they go through it. And right. to, I mean, I've had people say you need to create that. So when I am away, next month for a couple of weeks doing things that I will be um, actually creating that workbook to go that, that, you know, symbolize them and bring it all together so they have that to accompany the people who have the tablet on from iBooks on that. Right. So, yeah, good idea. All right. So, what are some of the other things? Any other really quick rules that we should know about before we get into some other arenas here? Um, not that I can think of any rules when it comes to the, the formatting. You know, remember, different devices diff will support different things. Not every, if you have a drop cap, not every e-reader is going to show a drop cap. Some of them might show a raised cap. Um, the little things, so try not to get married to the detail because it will be a pretty short-lived marriage. So it's important to keep that in mind, you know. And I see, I wouldn't have thought about that. I would have said certainly they all can understand drop and E. So what you're doing is keep it simple means plain text. <laughs> and What's what that? about plain text? What about bold and italic? Oh. Any problems with bold and italic and bullets? What I would recommend on when it comes to those, and this is also going to depend a little bit on how you format it. Um, Ebooks are web pages, and so. Personally, when I'm formatting an ebook, I try to be very cognizant of making sure that bolds and italics have their own special styling. And I find that by doing that, whether whatever software you're using to create this, um, using character styles will really help you just in case an e-reader is reading the CSS funky and it does not see your little override of making something bold or italic. That way it gets seen. Um, and also when it comes to bullets and lists, 
lot of the e-readers don't like that. So when you're exporting out of whatever software you're using, probably in design or something of that nature, just convert those over to text instead of ordered or unordered lists, and it'll save you a whole lot of brain damage and make sure that that book validates. Got it. All right. Good information. All right. So let me ask you this, Nick, that um, first of all, there's two parts of this. What can you do um, in your ebook, and what can't be in an ebook? And I know we've, co we've covered a couple of these things, but there's probably a whole list. There is. It's one of those things that also kind of look back. If you have a background in web development, you'll kind of see this or know a little bit about it. One of the major things that I find a lot of people have a hard time with is when it comes to certain fonts, especially at the beginning of a chapter, you have that chapter, whatever number in the subtitle. They're usually in pretty nice looking text when you're doing your print book. Well, mm -hmm. you can put those special fonts inside of an ebook, and there's even some e readers that will recognize it. Fires, iPhone, I'm sorry, iPad, those type of devices will recognize it. But where mm -hmm. you oftentimes come into a problem with those fonts and where I've had problems with customers is you do not own the license to distribute those fonts, meaning you have to go to the font foundry. In many cases, unless you found a font on, say, defont.com or something that says it's good to go for commercial use, you have to go to the font foundry and say, can I put this inside of an ebook? It's not something we think about with print because it's hard to pull that out of a PDF. With an ebook, it's a little bit different. So that can be a big don't. And then also recognizing that virtually any e-ink display, which is a lot of them, is not going to show that font. So I had this with one wow. of my own personal books. The font foundry wanted $250 a year per book to have it embedded for only 20% to see that font. No, thank you. It just wasn't worth it for me. So they got whatever their, the, whatever text they have selected inside their ebook. So things like that. Tables don't show up well. So you want to convert that to an image. Same with charts. Uh, we talked about numbered and bulleted lists to where you want to convert those over mm -hmm. to text to really save yourself the brain damage. Um, and colors. A lot of times colors may or may not come across, for example, especially if you're looking at an e display, it's monochromatic, it's black and white. So if you have any image elements, anything like that, you want to make sure they look good black and white. And if they're colors, they should look just as good in black and white because if it's too modeled, it might not look quite right and you might want to remove that from your book. And if and if your colors are all in in fifty shades of black, <laughs> it's, uh -huh. not gonna, it's not going to come across. Well, let it's me not, ask. Yeah. Okay, so in ebook land, are there is there a common standard font that that is you know um, the chocolate vanilla strawberry version? It's best to just stay in and instead of going to what you call the font the font foundry or the font, and for our listeners, the font is d a f o n t dot com. Um, that is there a laundry list of a or maybe a short list of what's an acceptable font that is easily integrated. Well, here's the cool part about it: you can format your ebook in whatever font you want because the e-reader is going to overwrite it. Just don't invent the font, so you yes, can do it whatever. Most of them are probably going to be in Times or Arial or. You're going to have some pretty generic web fonts that are preloaded onto the vast majority of e-readers. Okay. So I think Kindle ships was like six or something like that. Yeah. So in other words, for our listeners, there's nothing fancy dancy here. <laughs> in, <laughs> no, in, sadly. Okay. In the flow, in in a flow type thing. But wait a minute. Where? What about a fixed? Uh, reader, I mean, or, or, or you you fix the pages and you all that. They're almost like PDFs that maybe you're going to find on um, a, a tablet or an iBook. What can't you be more uh, specific with what exactly you want because they're not going to be changing it? Yeah, with a fixed layout ebook, you have a lot of room to play with where you want. Not quite as much as print, but pretty close. You can do quite a bit with it. Um, you're limited by HTML and what HTML and CSS will allow you to do and what a particular reader will allow you to do. For example, an iPad will display most everything. Um, so it'll do pretty well. 
but again, it's one of those where you have to look at the if you're you're trying to bounce back and forth between a replayable ebook or fixed layout ebook, you might want to consider what devices can read it. For example, an EE Kindle will not read a fixed layout book. Um, depending mm-hmm. on the retailer you're going through, your smartphone will probably not be able to read a fixed layout ebook either. Mm-hmm. But an iPad or a Kindle Fire should be able to do it just fine, depending on you know, how you formatted it and all that kind of stuff. Each one gets a little particular in that regard. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people don't realize that, that there isn't, um, it, it, they're not easily integrated in some of these devices. No. There, The assumption is, if you have one, it can take anything and everything. And that's the wrong assumption, right? Well, it, it, it'll take it. You just may not like how it makes it look. Um, yeah, it'll spit it out kind of funk factor some, in some cases. In other cases, it won't. So, that's again, we're keeping it simple. The more clean and simplistic you keep it, the less chance you're going to run into issues with someone who's using a really old or a really brand new device. So, in other words, not all ebooks treat your ebook the same. Is that just summing up? <laughs> all right. Yeah, pretty so, much. <laughs> <laughs> we put it together. All right, we have a couple of minutes before our next break, so let me let's start this off. Let's prep work. Okay, so I got a book. Um, what steps do I need to go to prep it for e-formatting? And I guess that, because this is going to overlap certainly into the next segment, but how many times does it make sense that you should be a DIYer or does it make sense to get a converter in the play? No, that's a very good question. Um, the biggest two things you want to ask yourself, I would say, if you're thinking about being a DIYer, is how much content are you planning on publishing on a regular basis? And how how tech savvy are you? Do you enjoy it? For example, I really enjoy learning how to use this layout software. I think it's fun. I enjoy it. I publish enough and I do it for business. So for me, justifying the cost of a Creative Cloud membership is very easy for me to justify. If I were, say, um, somebody who writes short stories and I publish three or four of them in a month, yeah, it probably is going to make more sense for you to do it on your own than it is for you to pay someone like me. Though I totally welcome that you pay me because I make great money off of you every month. So it might make more sense for you to kind of do it on your own. You publish a book every year or every other year and you don't, you won't be touching that software, the learning curve and all that, just just pay somebody. Avoid the headache. Or if you hate using this type of software. Okay. The fees really aren't high. <laughs> All right, and with, it, you know? with that, yeah, with Matt and Nick, we're going to come back, and we'll get back into avoiding headaches with these books. This is Judith Trials. It's all for you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We 
specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. I always think of ebooks, um, offering ebooks is it's like a, a restaurant that you, when you go into a restaurant, rarely do we ever go to a restaurant and all they do is serve chicken. Um, even right. K- K- KFC serves a lot of different dishes. And Noodles and Company has a huge variety of different noodles and also, you know, add-ons, etc. So in the publishing business, ebooks is like a menu that you may like want to consume them, but there's a lot of people who do. Um, there are some people who don't want to consume print books, but they just have a happy dance around the ebook, and there others want nothing to do with either one of them. All they do is want to listen and their audio. Mm-hmm. So what's very important is that for us as authors and for some of our listeners, including myself, we are also publishers, we have to be really tuned into that and make sure that we offer a variety to our potential readers and followers. And eBooks is one of those. With me is Nick Taylor. He's the principal in lightandsoundgraphics.com and we just we just kind of kissed on um, and there's more to tell in the DIY, the do-it-yourself version. I will confess to all of you, I do a lot of things do it myself. This is one I will not touch with a 10-foot pole. And and it's not that I went to, a, I did a class with Nick actually a couple of years ago. I don't know if he remembers it, but I, I, oh, I was, remember it. Okay, I was gung-ho. I was actually, I put a, a course together, um, an evening, a dinner, and a program for authors here in my community that we would learn about ebooks. And not only that, we are going to upload our, our text and create our own ebooks. And I went with that objective in mind. And by God, by the end of the evening, I uploaded and I did it. And I came away never freaking again that I am glad to pay someone to do this for me um, and make sure it's done right and I avoid the brain damage. But that's me. That's where I am. Um, and I think that you all need to understand. So there is, as Nick said, um, and Nick, why don't you repeat those again? You had two key questions to ask. The DI. Yeah, the two Right. The two questions I was, that I would ask is, you know, how much content are you publishing on a regular basis and how tech savvy or into this kind of stuff are you? And some of those questions that I ask on that um, that we talked about a little bit during the break is that, for example, I do all of my layout in Adobe InDesign, which is the same software we lay out books in and the, your print editions of books and advertising and all that. And the thing of it is, is ebooks have gotten more advanced, even from that class where you really couldn't do much with an ebook, now you can do a whole lot more and you almost need better software or you need to be good at coding HTML. If you're good at writing HTML and all that kind of stuff, you're perfect for the ebook world. You just got to learn a few things, you'll be good to go. If you're not, um, you're going to need to learn some software. There are some things you can do. There is some, some less expensive software that does have more limitations out there and some software you may be writing in. For example, Scrivener will export out some of these files 
but it's not going to do anywhere near as good or as advanced a job as layout software or going in and messing with the HTML. So if you're someone who's publishing, you know, a short story every couple of weeks or even once a month, it might be worth the time and the effort learning how to do this. If you're someone who doesn't or someone who hates technology, this might just be one of those things that you want to pay the small fee on to just make the pain go away and to make sure it's done right. Because if it's done wrong, man, will that hurt your sales and give you some pretty nasty reviews. And and you don't want that. So, and, yeah. and you, knew, you know, when you started talking about all the things in the career, I could see glaze coming over my eyes. So that's not where I'm going to go. I will engage someone like you. So let's talk about engaging someone like you. What's it cost, Nick, to uh, a typical type of e, e conversion? So let's go ahead and I can talk about my, my base cost. I am, there's a bunch of different type of billing ways out there. The way Light and Sound works is I charge base uh, on simplistic projects that could have add-ons into it, depending mm -hmm. on what kind of project you have that's still in that simple range. Say you're just a regular old novelist, okay? I've got a novel, it's X number of words, there's, you know, maybe some POV switches in there, but basically it's a novel. That's going to run you about 150 bucks to have that formatted for an EPUB and a Kindle file. Um, if you want it uploaded, you know, me to upload it for you, there, there's a fee for that, but a lot of, a lot of consistent publishers usually don't require that. So you can get in the gate pretty cheap. If you have a really advanced ebook that has a lot of stuff, yeah, your costs are probably going to go up. But on those, it's one of those you're kind of on an individual look-see basis, if that makes any sense. But generally, pretty much no, nothing special in there, nothing strange. Um, I shouldn't say strange, nothing advanced. You're looking right around the 150 mark to come in the door. All right, so when, but when you're talking about a lot of stuff, are we talking about mm -hmm. tables or trying to drop in illustrations or anything like that? That is, is that what... would not include that. So oh, you no, want to no, start no, I get in... that. Yeah, I get that. So add-ons would be like tables and illustrations and, and mm -hmm. goodies like that, correct? Right, and it and on the price of that, it depends on if you have a table that's formatted pretty and you have it in a bunch of image files, well, I'm going to charge you a couple bucks to put those in because it's just putting in an image. If it's I have to format the table, well, you know, tables can get pretty lengthy to format. So then costs are going to change from there. So those are some of the things to keep in mind. What I tell customers who are looking at doing this is to always have in mind with service providers that my time equals your money. So if something's going to be really advanced and take a lot of my time, it's going to take a lot of your money. If something's pretty basic, it's not going to take that much of your money. If it makes sense. All right, and that seems reasonable. Well, Nick, what what did I have? I mean, we talked about a table, another form. Mm -hmm. So, how, how do you handle books with those kind of things? Is there anything variable from what we haven't already said there, or is there something new we need to look at? Basically, what I would look at doing in those situations is I would say you want to keep as many of those form elements inside the book as you can, meaning if you have a question list, we leave that question list in there. You're going to probably want to alter your text in that take action section and say, write down on a piece of paper or go to www.authorswebsite.com to get this form. And then on top of that, I would recommend building a form that people can go then if they don't want to write it down on a piece of paper that they can go to your website, download the form, print it out. And on those forms, the beauty of it, you're printing to the person's local device, um, not a professional press. So you can make that form. You can lay those out with 8.5 by 11 sheets in mind because that's probably what they're going to be printed on. And and people need to recognize that. Yeah, the 8 and 11 would be perfect. So, And if you've got good notes that you're taking or if you have a workbook, this is mm -hmm. ideal. Yeah, this is ideal. Yeah, and spread it out in that section. It's their paper, mm -hmm. so spread it out. Make it so people can do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Nick, and, and let's let's hop away from the designer a little bit. Um, and I know that you you've got a couple of books. Actually, you've got several books out. You write in the fantasy arena. Is that the genre? Mm -hmm. you, yeah, fantasy arena. And you've certainly sold. I mean, your own pedigree. You've what's what's uh, your? I, I think you've said over a hundred thousand ebooks have been downloaded from yours. 
Right. That's well. Um, looking at the first book in my first series, the book Leg on Awakening, which is a free ebook, has been downloaded over 150,000 times. Do you recommend them? So, do you do you recommend authors do free ebooks? If they have a series, it can make sense. It's one of those that. So, in the case of the Lagon series, is a is a good example of this. Um, or if you want to look at other successful authors like uh, The Dawning of Power by Brian Rathbone, those type of authors who have used these models, mm -hmm. you see the first book free, and then you see the other books in the series that generally don't even have sales run on them um, because you got the first book for free. So in that regard, if you have more content, it's great. Now, if you just have one book out and you're like, I'm going to give it away for free, it's a little bit like, it's like having one carnival ride and not charging people for it and hoping they drive back by in a year or something when you have a second carnival ride that you're going to charge them a buck for. Mm -hmm. So it, it's one of those, if you don't have multiple products out that tie into each other, I wouldn't recommend using the free model unless you're just looking to get a bunch of reviews and you don't care about book sales. In which case, if you don't care about revenue, hey, make it free. Why not? <laughs> or drive I it. I personally have rent that I got to pay. So yeah, I'm me too. For my other yeah. Book. Yeah, and, I, and I'm going to recommend to everyone, I've mentioned this many times, is that uh, uh, Amazon has their matchbook program, which I think is excellent. And you should mm -hmm. be signing up for that. It's really designed to push the print book. But as uh -huh. a add-on coattail bonus to it is that you can include your ebook. If you buy this book, my print book, you can add on the ebook for anywhere from free Ninety nine cents, dollar ninety nine, or two ninety nine, and it really does yeah. add and push in. And I think that um, I mean I've always felt people. I think it's crazy just to do an ebook. You you should match in and bring bring in at least a print on demand. Um, if you're going right. that that way, I would be doing that um, and bringing that along, and then I would be adding in other goodies that you could have. So Nick, I'd love to get into some of the areas since I've opened up the, the little goodie of price. We've got about a minute before our next break. So let's okay. let's let's just talk about some of the pricing. What's the hot sweet spot on ebook pricing right now? Um, okay, and depending on how many people are listening on Twitter, I can already hear the war starting. Pricing is pretty <laughs> controversial when it comes to ebooks. Mm -hmm. um, I would say as a general rule of thumb, I would price your ebook at about slightly over 50% of what you would your trade paper, about 60% of what you charge your trade paper at. I wouldn't exceed 999 because you hurt yourself in royalty brackets. Um, and I probably wouldn't drop below 299 unless you have something that's a, a short or something of that nature. So somewhere in the 599 to 799 rate can be good. Um, I charge 499 for some of my books. That was the sweet spot then. Older titles you can bring down to that, but um, right. it's going to kind of depend. All right, let's come back to that. We're going to take our final break here. With me is Nick Taylor. We're talking ebooks uh, this this afternoon, evening, or morning, whenever you're listening to this. I'm Judith Files, and it's author you, your guide to book publishing. <laughs> This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. 
Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing we provide warehousing kitting distribution inventory management a new print on demand facility streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project you can also visit our website at www.tps1.com Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Nick Taylor is with me today. He's the principal of lightandsoundgraphics.com. They specialize in um, ebook conversions and they do it very, very reasonably with a, most, most books coming in in the $150 range, which I think is reasonable. And, and Nick, we've been talking about um, Kindle, uh, certainly in Amazon, mm-hmm. because Amazon is the gorilla in North America. But there is the rest right. of the world. There is the rest of the world. There is. And that we do have to identify that, especially if you have a book um, that is very receptive to a global audience, you, you can't stay exclusive with Amazon, although they would love it. So what are some of those other options out there? Um, some, there's a lot of different retailers that are out there, a huge, huge majority. So, I mean, even in North America, I recommend people to not go exclusive with any one provider. One of those options is Kobo that's overseas. Um, They do a great job with stuff. There are the subscription-based services like Oyster and Scribe. Most of those, if not all the major ones, you can either go direct with um, in some cases, but there's a company called Smashwords.com that you can upload books um, for free. They just take a small percentage of it. They will take a fully formatted, validated EPUB file and distribute it out there so it's actually a lot easier than it used to be when you had to use Word docs. And they can get you out to all sorts of places. And there are others, too, like Book Baby, um, which I've never personally used, so I can't say if they're good or they're bad or, in, or indifferent, and some of these other retailers. So I would, I would highly recommend going to this. Some, some of them have, especially Kobo, a lot better market <laughs> share outside of the U.S. And well, yeah, they are yeah. dominating others. <laughs> yeah, Kobo, I think, is really important. And the other thing we need to say, if you want to get your book to a library, Moby, which is a, the, the platform that Amazon uses, ain't going to work here. You need mm-hmm. to have it in yep. an EPUB file. So I think in worst case, you ought to get your book up on uh, Smashwords. They can rebranch yeah. it out into those other areas. So it can be, you've got that conversion and you can get it over. I think that's very important to understand. It is. <coughs> Excuse me. But you know what? I forgot to give everyone a shout out because you're listening to this. This is Thursday when we first broadcast this because I have a brand new book coming out next week. And it's called Snappy, Sassy, Salty Wise Words for Authors and Writers. And it's over 250 of my original quotations. We're going to do a special launch on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday next week. So that would be July 22nd, 23rd, 24th. And if you go to the snappy sassy salty dot com website, which will be up tomorrow morning, that you can um, see what the gifts are. Because there's, if you know, I don't do hundreds of gifts. I just make them gifts exclusively that are kind of selected to the book itself, and you can get those along with the book. So go go go. <coughs> and I've you know I've looked at this. Can I give you a little <coughs> on this? You've shown me 
the book because obviously they're you know you get some stuff that's in you some things. So I've seen part of it. It's a pretty fun little book. I like it. It is fun, isn't it? So it is very. I don't fun. know what kind of endorsement value that is coming from me, but it, hey, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, no, but it has some great endorsements. It does. All right, Nick. So in this this last really few minutes that we have with you. Let's go over some recaps, some of the key things that people need to do and not do when it comes to ebooks. Mm -hmm. So, what would that be? Um, things that people need to do. Keep and it not simple. do. And, and not do. And not do. And not to do. Don't make it overcomplicated. Um, <laughs> I'm reminded of what my grandfather always told me. We'd be sweeping the stairs. It didn't matter. The man would say the 70s. Proper prior planning prevents or performance or product in this case it would be a product and I mean we heard it sweeping the stairs we heard it loading the dishwasher we hated it right and now I say it to people but um, <laughs> it's one of those things that really is kind of true um, if you're going to a service provider or you're going out to ebook get everything done before finish one stage before you go on to the next because even though ebooks are a little bit more forgiving when it comes to altering things and whatnot Really, proper prior planning will prevent piss poor products. So be very cognizant of that. So think when you do this, breathe, take your time, and get it done right the first time. Whether you're doing it on your own or you're paying me or you're paying someone else, do it right the first time. So don't jump the gun. Don't get caught ahead of yourself. Publishing is not a fast industry. We all learn this the hard way. Um, and just take your time on it. So, do you know, make sure everything's ready to go. Um, your most e providers are going to want a Word doc from you, uh -huh. and that Word doc. This is going to sound kind of silly, but make sure you've you've accepted all of your changes in that Word doc if it came from your editor. Sometimes people don't. As a provider, I don't read through those changes. I I don't really care about a fight over a comma, and I just accept all from the word go. So. If you were teetering on something, you better hope you were teetering on the side of accept. Because me, like most providers, it's just getting pushed through. We don't, we don't know. We don't read it. We yeah, don't read know, those I, kind of comments. So have that thought. Yeah, I think it's one of the great, uh, great misunderstandings. I think a lot of authors have when it comes to layout and design. And in fact, my experience is most people in layout design are fairly poor spellers. And they won't mm -hmm. even see, they don't, they just take your information and they, they're looking for, you know, does it look right? Or, you know, is it flowing mm -hmm. right? Is it, do I have orphans? Do I have widows? Those kind of things. They're looking for that. They are yeah. not looking if you spelled T E C K and it came out T C E K, it, you know, they, they're not even going to see that kind of thing. So well, when it should time. be T E C H, you know, so. You've got to take that on as your responsibility. And here's the other thing I'm going to, uh, a lot of times that authors have, and Nick and I have talked about this, they have their original Word document that gets uploaded for layout. And then layout, once you're in layout, you go through a series of corrections. And that, mm -hmm. that original document gets so altered, and yet they send over that original document for ebook layout. No, 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 no. You want well, then the they're astonished final. that it's wrong. Yes. Yes, it's loaded with mistakes. Mm-hmm. So. Well, and a little dirty, little little known fact that people don't know about us layout artists, and some people will be here, maybe not actually here with me. I, I actually turn off InDesign spell check because you, for all I know, you might be trying to misspell a word wrong, and I don't like seeing the red squiggle. Mm -hmm. So mm. check it because we turn it off. We, we don't <laughs> We don't care. So well, really keep yeah. in mind, yeah, and have an updated document. For Please do it. Because if you have three-part yeah. threes, I might email you about it if I see something like that. If you have a paragraph that you swapped out, I'm not going to know from Peter Pan. Yeah, there you go. And the, and the other thing is that um, it's it's important to keep that close dialogue so they know what's going on. And, and I think it's, it's also imperative that you make sure you read it as like on an e-reader format. Mm -hmm. What if you don't have an e-reader? So, Nick, what do they do? Where, how do they look to see what this baby's going to look like? Where do they go? I'm going to tell them to use the software that I tell every client to use to proof their book. It's free. It's called mm -hmm. Adobe Digital Edition. It's made by Adobe. 
It's industry standard software. It's free. If you want to start reading EPUBs on your computer, you can with um, ADE. Adobe Digital Edition is great. I have all of my clients proof things in there, so we're looking at Apple to Apple as close as we can in eBook. So it's a great platform to look off of. Adobe Digital Edition, it's free. You'll find it on their product page. So that's where you go, and, and it's, you need to do that. Um, it's part of you taking yeah. responsibility as the author as we go along. Nick, I have a couple of minutes yet, so I have to ask you this question. Okay. What do you, what do you wish authors would ask you before they start their project and before they do the final button push saying, publish, let's go? Uh, what do I wish they would ask me? Yep. That's kind of a tough question because with each one you're like, man, I wish you would ask me that question. And some of them you're, you you don't care. I think I would say I, I would like them to ask me what they need to have, what the best practices they would have before they come to me, um, like we're talking about changing some of those things, and what steps they need to take to ensure their book goes well. I try to remember read, to tell them, read your book, but I'm a human being, and I have two kids. And I have all those kind of things. I might forget to tell you that. I usually don't, but I might. So ask your converter, what do I need to do to ensure this goes well? And they'll tell you nine times out of ten. And we'll be giddy that you asked us that question. Mm -hmm. And even happier if you listen to the answer. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's very important to ask them. Also, I think it's important to ask your converter, is there a better time during the day or night in this in some cases when I should communicate with you um, because I don't know if if you're like me Nick sometimes people can interrupt me during the day but when I'm mm -hmm. into the zone and I'm writing or if I'm doing a heavy content editing job um, number mm -hmm. one <clears throat> I go silent and yeah. and often, you know when I'm working deep on a project they may not hear from me for for several weeks because I'm right. so heavy into it I'm, I'm, and taking care of little things, but I don't have time to spend an hour or two on the phone going over it. I am just working. Part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week 